In case you didn't know, Creator Warehouse is the entity responsible for designing and creating products on LTTstore.com, and as such, is the entity responsible for designing and manufacturing the cable management set, which I have been reviewing in the past few videos. And fortunately enough, they're really active in the community and have been engaged in commentary to clear up any misconceptions or confusion. And so Mr. Tynan Stack, who works at Creator Warehouse, provided some comments. So Mr. Tynan Stack was kind enough to provide additional insight in a comment to a Reddit post I made regarding my last video that I figured I should share with you today. And so he talks about various nuances and small aspects of the design that isn't readily apparent. But this thumb tab, which is the triangular part, dang, these magnets are strong. The thumb tab, the triangular part, can be removed if you're trying to attach the key to anything that has a super deep keyhole, akin to the third power bar in my last video. So the power bar key comes like this. Tynan recommended that I remove the thumb plate. It adds some thickness. The problem with this power bar is that these recesses are far too deep for this screw combined with the thumb plate to be able to go in sufficiently deep enough and slide over. But without the thumb plate, it has a clearance for it. And it works like so. I'm gonna try the other slot now. As I was complaining about this power bar hump being a problem, which I suspect it may be. Slide it over. Oh, there we go. It angles the other way. And so that leads me to be concerned about Installing this on a flat surface. Slides over. And I'm gonna tighten it just enough to stay in place. But now if you look, they're kind of off kilter. They're not, these power bar keys aren't exactly parallel. This one's angling, but slightly. This one's angling a lot more. So I'm suspecting that the installation for this guy is not gonna be all that great. If I put it against a flat surface and take a look at it down here, it becomes readily apparent that it's not going to work well against a flat surface. Some custom installation of maybe angling the plates wherever they're installed may be necessary for this power bar. This one's compatible, but the power bar design isn't all that great. I could take additional steps. Like I could probably add something over here to brace it up and something over on this side to brace it up, like maybe a paper clip or I'm sure I could MacGyver something if I really wanted to, as could the viewer. But yeah, uh, out of the box, some power bars will just kind of be a pain in the butt to install, unfortunately. But at least it's uh, installable. Good to know. The thumb tab can also be flipped over you're attaching to something with a super shallow keyhole slot to stop the bottom of the threaded pin from hitting the place, I guess the magnet on the other side. So now I'm installing it upside down. I do notice that the thumb tab does have a little slight taper, an inward taper, but then it also has feet on one side. So if I were to install it upside down, which is this way, which I was doing in my last power bar key dedicated video, before calling it out at the very end. These feet no longer go over the magnet and actually push up against the surface. So in the event you have a shallow power bar keyhole, it allows you to get away with not having to tighten the screw as much as you would otherwise. The ridges or the feet don't go over the round magnet. So it allows you to get away with screwing in the screw much less so that it doesn't pop out on this side and this side you really don't want the screw popping out because you want a flat surface as much as possible in order to get as much magnetic attraction to the magnetic plate that you're attaching the magnet to so just to demonstrate this is a much stronger stick than attaching this magnet to a surface while this screw is ever so slightly peeking out it's gonna be a little wobbly, right? Sure, it's still strong, but it's not aligned well. You wanna avoid this wobble wherever possible. The thumb tab is also designed 
to be slid out to help pull or hold the key in place while you were tightening it down. Similar to how it was in my previous video when I was installing it a couple times. So the threaded hole in the magnet, also known as the knurled base, is a standard a quarter 20 type screw. So you can use it for things like camera mounts, bolts, or anything else you can really fit into this thing. Uh, isn't this just a camera shoe? It's the thing you screw onto the bottom of cameras for a tripod, right? Well, it's so interesting you said that, and this is actually something that um, the creator of this product mentioned in a comment recently in response oh, so it's to intentional yes it's intentionally compatible with that sort of thing mm. correct dude are you even like a, a camera person uh no i'm not really a camera person. and but... yet you jump to that conclusion yeah <laughs> that's funny yeah it looks kind of like a camera shoe doesn't it yeah to like a lay person interesting i didn't even consider that yeah because that's a camera shoe and bullet point three the tapered threaded bolt is flat on each side to allow it to fit into many keyhole slots as well as making it possible to tighten it down using either the thumb tab itself or the walls of the keyhole in the power bar to stop it from spinning because the power bars themselves are designed for nails or screws they're expected to spin you definitely don't want it to spin because if it's spun as a screw while installed into the power bars key you would not be able to tighten or loosen the magnet on on it so that's why it's flat. Makes a lot of sense, actually. Thanks for the intel, Tynan. Appreciate it. Keep up the good work.